Hi, my name's Scott. I'm the Goggleworks Hot Glass Studio Manager, but I'm uh, covering for Maggie while she's out on maternity leave here in the Fusing Studio. So I'm putting together a little kit to take home for some of the students and make some coasters. So a series of four identical or slightly different uh, coasters using four inch sheet glass clear slabs and layering some uh, color and some other clear in between to come up with something kind of like this. These are already glued on. And then we'll take some black frit using a sifter and a paintbrush to kind of fill in the cracks like a little grout line, almost like doing tile and grout. So uh, once they are fired to a full fuse, it'll be a nice flat surface. So it's nice and smooth. If you see, look at it on edge, you don't want any bumps. So we'll do this in a full fuse so it's nice and flat and put some little rubber bumpers on and have a nice, and, nice matching set of coasters. So this was my idea, uh, one of my, I guess, inspirations for doing this. It's a very simple technique, but it has a really cool effect overall. See the two different uh, styles here, the one on the left with more organic uh, forms, a lot of curves, as opposed to the one here on the right that looks more like tile. It's more of a geometric pattern. Just how the, uh, the space in between creates thicker or thinner grout lines and uh, how the overall feel is affected as well as you know, some of this extra frit that uh, comes out on the sides. Really creates a nice line. So. Uh, your options are to pick some colors out of a mixed bag of some of our color scrap and start out by placing these. You can mix some of the colors if you'd like. You don't necessarily have to stick with, you know, doing all the same thing, but uh, all the same colors as, as here. This just happens to be what I decided to do to make a matching set with different colors. And I just spaced three of them close together in a weird, random pattern and build it out from the center. So uh, you can cut more. Each kit will come with uh, a pair of running scores and the breakers. And everybody knows how to use these. These are marked the upside. But just a refresher, say I want to cut this piece a little bit smaller. I like to start at the end, the top, and pull towards me. Just so that you make a score. You get to hear that crunching sound the entire way. And then put that line of the top right on, on the top of the score mark, slight little pressure, and you break it right where you want. You can use the Sharpie marker uh, to draw the line where you want if you're trying to make more of a representational image or want to get a little more detail in your cuts. And same thing with the clear. Uh, as you're piecing this out, you know, if that's going to come over to the border, you can make a line on each side and uh, cut it appropriately. So when you're attaching the color, just so these don't move around in shipping, getting them back here to be fired, you have to glue them on there. The tiniest little bit of glue is enough. The more glue you use, the more likely it is to gas off and create bubbles during the firing process. So if you get even that is plenty, because it does puddle out and it will hold just fine. And obviously these will move as the glue is dry, drying, so it's a, a matter of constantly shifting them to keep them right where you want. All right, so I'm just going to stick with straight lines. I'm not going to do it with any curved pieces just to match the rest of the set. So uh, I have a lot of tall skinny ones, I have a lot of uh, little squares. So I'm going to just start spacing these randomly. One cool effect I do like is having a lot of uh, smaller pieces along with the, uh, the bigger ones. Kind of creates more of a, an interesting composition with the grout lines. You kind of see that as, as I go on. And I'll go with some more of this. So really, all I'm going to do is keep going around until that entire piece is filled up.
Okay, so that's the last piece of clear. These are all still really wet and moving all over the place, as you can see. So you just want to make sure that there's nothing overhanging the edge. Keep it all contained within that four inch square and then let it dry before the next step. Much easier to do the grout line with the, uh, the frit when the glass is dry. So this one is dry. So here you can look on the edge and see all these grooves where we'll be filling in with black. We don't want that to spill out. So I'm gonna go around the perimeter and just put a tiny little bead of glue at the edge of each gap and that should hold all that frit in there. And it works really well if you stick your tongue out it makes you concentrate a little bit more. Again, I'm trying not to glob too much on there, but I definitely want to make sure that the frit doesn't have a place to escape. Right. I think I got them all. All right, next step is filling in with the frit. So each kit will come with a little container full of this stuff. You can either spoon it on for a little more precision, or I know that I'm just gonna cover the whole thing. And doing this on a piece of paper is key as well. Anything that we brush off with a paintbrush, you don't want that to be wasted. So you can keep it contained on the paper. That way you can save it all and put another layer on. It's just good not to waste in general. So here you can see how some of the wider spaces are obviously thicker, thicker lines. You kind of play with that a little bit. Either keep them all closer together or spread them apart, do it randomly. But this is how the line quality is determined by the space of the gaps in between the pieces of glass. This is looking like I got a pretty good coating. You don't have to fill it all the way up. Get it as close to it as possible. As this fuses, it'll all kind of shrink down a little bit. You want to keep the same thickness, that way it's nice and flat and smooth on the surface. Yeah, that looks good. Next step is paintbrush. Just use this to brush it to fill in all the gaps. That looks pretty good. And I'll start in the center and just start brushing it off the edge. Don't sneeze at this point. over a little bit. Try not to get any glue on the paintbrush. If you do, that's not a problem. You can kind of wipe that off after it dries. Oh, I forgot two little areas right here.
move that to a clean area and see how I need a little bit more on this side. Any sort of residual tiny little specks will melt into a tiny little polka dot. Kind of like all these random ones. Kind of like that. Or if you want to get it cleaned up even more, just keep brushing, brushing away. All right, so I got this cleaned up pretty good. Now I'm going to move it to this cork board. Each kit will come with a cork board and a bunch of thumbtacks. That way you can pin it to the board keep it flat. You don't want all that frit falling off during transport. So first I'm going to clean my mess up. There we go. All right, so I got that on the cork board. I'm not going to put the red one on here just yet because it's still drying, but uh, each kit will come with a cork board and some thumbtacks, and you can just press a few in around the edges to keep it from shifting. All right, All right so I have these three secured. I'm not gonna secure this one just yet. I'm gonna wait until it dries before I finish it. Uh, so once it, uh, these are all done and pinned in here, uh, to make sure that you keep it nice and flat. Obviously, you don't want to tilt it over, flip it upside down. Just keep it nice and flat, and get it to us, and then I will show you the next step once I get it here. Okay, so once we get them here, these are the pieces on the cork board. I'm just going to bring them over to the kiln. We have some pieces set up to fire already, and I will just carefully unpin these. Out. Get them all loaded in as tightly as possible to save space. Not too close that they're going to touch. Just like that, getting everything else laid out. Uh, once they are loaded, I'll close this up and turn it on to a program that gets up to about 1500 degrees slowly and cools down at a slow rate as well, but it all takes about uh, two and a half to three days when it's all said and done. So uh, once they're fired, get them out and wrap them up and put the rubber bumpers on the bottom of them. Send them home for you guys.